uh, hopefully this example here will make things a bit clearer. Um, here's the uh, a, a tree of the showing the various classes involved. Uh, there's T and there's S and um, here in uh, class T we've got this protected uh, field there and a protected method M there. And uh, I'm assuming for the moment that um, B doesn't also declare a field F or a method M. So I'm assuming that it doesn't get overridden in B for the time being. Now uh, 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 this class T is in package 1 and in package 2 we've got class S which extends B. And if we look at this case, this is test 1 is the easy case, um, we're just using inheritance here to access this uh, field F and this method M. So that's uh, straightforward access there using in inheritance. And uh, here we got test two, and this is the uh, this is the difficult case. Um, and um, this is using uh, uh, this is accessing the uh, fields using a reference that's passed in. Now what matters is what this reference is. If this reference is T, A, B, or C, then you'll get a compiler error when you try and use it down here. Okay. And if it's S, D, E, F, G, or H, then it's okay. Now, um, important thing to note is that um, access, of course, is determined at compile time. So it doesn't matter what T actually refers to. So if um, X was, say, uh, T, uh, then um, this little T here could refer to H, for instance, or if you did test to new H, for example. But um, if X is uh, of um, uh, type T, then it doesn't help you at all. It will still give a compiler error because um, the compiler is actually unable to guarantee that there is an inheritance path passing through S to T. Because um, if X was T, um, the only thing that you know for sure is that that variable little t is going to refer to something um, of uh, class T or a subclass of it. So it could be anything in there. It's the only thing that the compiler knows. So it could, for example, be A. It could refer, that little t could refer to something of class A. And of course, uh, going from A to T, there's that inheritance path does not pass through S. And that's why the compiler gives uh, an error. And it won't allow you at this point here to use uh, to use that reference um, to access these protected uh, field or method. Right then. Um, uh, if of course, um, uh, if of course it did refer to say um, uh, H, then of course there's nothing to stop you from casting it. Okay, so you you could cast that reference to um, uh, so that it was of uh, type uh, um, uh, it was of type uh, H or uh, S in this case. I'm, I'm showing it as S there, and then of course you could access it, and then that would work. But if you do that cast like that, of course it's downcasting, and it, what happens is you'll be a runtime check will occur to make sure that it is of um, of uh, that uh, thing is of uh, uh, class S or lower. Right, so one last uh, thing here. Um, uh, supposing M was overridden in B. Okay, and the net effect of that a bit would be that um, you would not be able to get at the M in T. Uh, from test one, uh, 
and not easy anyway because if you try and cast uh, if you take this and you cast it of course it, it doesn't affect the uh, class referred to so it won't help you get it a different version of M and uh, if you use super of course it's just going to give you B's version so um, that doesn't help at all uh, of course if it was um, a static method so if M was static then of course it's quite easy. You just do t dot m and you'll get the right one straight away. Uh, that that's the way to do it. By the way, uh, don't cast if it's static methods. Always try and use the class name because then it makes it clear to whoever's reading it that it's a static method. Okay, just a few things about uh, fields and um, access. Um, first of all, local variables and arguments. Um, never carry access modifiers um, and it just wouldn't make sense uh, they're passed on the stack and they exist only for the duration of the method or the constructor or exception handler because they take arguments and local variables as well okay so it doesn't make any sense in that case um, now uh, the compiler uh, we'll give an error if um, a class declares two different fields with the same name. Okay, so you can't have one class declaring two different fields with the same name. Um, a field um, can have the same name as a method though because uh, the compiler can always tell which is which since uh, a method is always going to be followed by a left bracket uh, okay there may be a bit of white space in front of the left bracket but it will be followed by a left bracket so it's easy for it to tell which is which of course you shouldn't do that it's recommended that you don't do it but uh, you can um, now a field in a class hides all accessible fields with the same name in all super classes and super interfaces of that class. It does not matter if the types don't match or if one of them is static and one of them isn't. Now this is very different from the case with uh, methods. It's basically a free-for-all with fields. It's only the name which matters. Um, and unlike with methods, there's no requirement that the access level of uh, a hiding field be wider than its than the hidden field. So again, it's very different to the case with methods. Um, a class inherits all fields from its direct superclass and direct super interfaces which are accessible. Uh, not private and not hidden by declaration in the class uh, but that's more or less what you'd expect anyway so that's standard now it's possible to inherit two or more different fields with the same name uh, this is not a problem However, if you try and access them, uh, it will trigger a compiler error, and the compiler will tell you the name's ambiguous. And um, if you want to avoid this, it's usually necessary to cast it, for, ex for example. 